Good evening. Tonight's uh, post would like to discuss the subject of the 144,000 and those with. Uh, as present truth believers, many of us are aware of the uh, controversial issue uh, with the 144,000 issue in regards to the those with. Uh, many uh, are divided in this issue. Some believe that um, it's a strict literal number, 144,000 sealed from the whole house of Israel, all the tribes. And others believe that there's going to be 144,000 and what's called those with the 144,000 that survive the Ezekiel 9 church judgment when it comes to the uh, Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, we have went over other uh, aspects of this church judgment, so if you'd rather... Uh, if you know, want to know more about that subject, we suggest you uh, watch some of the videos that we have, uh, particularly uh, God's uh, end time message to the SDA church uh, video. So um, in this subject, we're going to discuss first the, the general uh, understanding of the 144,000 issue in regards to uh, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, understanding and uh, the further light that came to the church in 1930 from Brother Victor T. Hodoff, which is the uh, Davidian Seventh-day Adventist understanding of the issue. So first we'll start out with the basic reading, which is found in Revelation 7, uh, verse 1. After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or any tree. Verse 2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. Verse 3. Saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the, of the children of Israel were sealed. And then verse 5, 6, 7, and 8, I'll go, uh, go into the different tribes and uh, how each tribe had 12,000 uh, sealed within it. So um, when we read that, um, we can look over here to the chart. And uh, this is the chart that uh, was made by uh, the prophet Victor T. Hodoff back in the uh, 30s, I believe. And we'll look up here and we'll see uh, this angel right here in the top right-hand corner is the sealing angel. This is the one that calls out uh, to these four angels that are given uh, the ability to hurt the earth and the sea. Uh, and we can see that they're, they're uh, shown here with weapons in their hands. And so this angel is, is telling them to hold back. And also these angels here are in the four corners of the earth. And they are holding back the winds of, uh, of persecution to come upon the church. And the reason why these uh, four winds are held back is because the 144,000 in the world need to be sealed before these winds can be let loose. And uh, I know some... Sometimes in the, in the spirit of prophecy, uh, the, the winds uh, in the Bible also, the winds represent strife uh, or uh, nation conquest and so forth. However, this is not the case in Revelation 7. The reason is, as Revelation clearly says, it is held back for the purpose of allowing in, this, in the world here, even the United States over here and, and, and Africa and, and all over Europe and so forth, 144,000 servants of God uh, need to be sealed. So once that's sealed, then these angels are allowed to let go the earth, uh, the wind upon the earth, and these angels as well, to uh, hurt the earth and the sea. And uh, that's another study that we, we can go into later. But uh, this is basically the drawing that uh, depicts uh, Revelation 7, 1 to 4. So after, after knowing uh, 
what Revelation 7, 1 to 4 says, um, I think it's important that we uh, discuss, first of all, the understanding, just the general understanding of the 144,000. And um, uh, one of the things that come to mind is the fact that uh, Israel is uh, needs to be uh, discussed in this in this light because we need to know who is who is Israel? Is it the uh, uh, Jews of today uh, that in Revelation seven, or is it uh, another class of people um, by definition? And so, what we'd like to go into is. Um, uh, who this Israel is. In the spirit of prophecy, as we as Seventh-day Adventists uh, understand it, clears up the issue in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 164. And I'll read that. In order to be purified and to remain pure, Seventh-day Adventists must have the Holy Spirit in their hearts and in their homes. The Lord has given me light that when the Israel of today humble themselves before him and cleanse the soul temple from all defilement, he will hear their prayers in behalf of the sick and will bless in the use of his remedies for disease. That was Testimonies, Volume 9, page 164. So we see here clearly that um, Spirit of uh, Prophecy identifies Seventh-day Adventists as the Israel of today. Then we have another uh, uh, quote from... Uh, Spirit of Prophecy, and it says, He sounds the note of warning and reproves sin just as faithfully as he, as in the days of Jeremiah. But the Israel of our time have the same temptations to scorn reproof and hate counsel as had ancient Israel. That's Testimonies, Volume 4, page 165. And then we have another verse. Uh, there is a limit beyond which he will no longer delay his judgments. The desolation of Jerusalem stand as a solemn warning before the eyes of modern Israel that corrections given through his chosen instruments cannot be disregarded with impunity. And that is uh, found in Testimonies, Volume 4, page 166. So we see from the, the references here that the Israel of today means the 12 tribes within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So this is why we are going into this subject of the 144,000 and the those with issue, because this is very important from two specific angles, and that is we must have a clear conception of who the 144,000 uh, is, and, and we also have to have a clear conception who the those with are, and a particularly this post is being made to uh, speak to present truth believers today. And uh, we want to clear up some, some issues and some misunderstanding about the those with issue. And we're going to give you some real solid evidence that you can stand firmly upon based on spirit prophecy and uh, the Lord's Elijah message, which we know as, uh, as present truth believers is the shepherd's rod. And so we're going to give you some uh, references plus some understandings of these references so that you can get a clearer understanding of this issue. This, those with is very important. Now, one of the things that we want to talk about in regards to the, uh, to the 144,000 issue first is the understanding that uh, ma many people ask, well, this, this number may be a literal, but this isn't all that's going to be sealed within the church. And uh, one of the things that we'd like to, to remind us is that uh, the, the Lord in His judgments throughout the Old Testament uh, starting with Noah. Uh, in Noah's day, 
we all know, and some say a million, some say several million people were alive on the earth. Eight people survived God's first judgments upon the world. We know this is a tiny, tiny amount of people compared to the world. Then we go to uh, the time of Lot and the, the great big cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which some say were several hundred thousand in those cities. We know that one family was saved in God's judgments. Very, very tiny amount compared to the, the, the several hundred thousand that uh, were uh, known to exist at that time in those cities. Then we go to the Exodus with Moses and his people being brought out from the land of Egypt. There were two adults over the age of 20 that made it to the kingdom. And some say a million, some say 800,000, some say even more than a million people came out of Egypt. And God, after his judgments were poured upon them on the desert, allowed two to make it to the kingdom. So, based on God's history, we can see that sad as it is, his history shows that it is the few that survive his serious judgments upon the world. And so when it comes to the SDA church judgment, we as present truth believers have to go by what's said. And what is said from the whole house of Israel in Revelation 7 is that 144,000 were sealed. And uh, so one of the things we have to remember is that we don't want to add, we don't want to subtract from God's revelation word. Because we know in Revelation 22, the Lord himself warns us very strictly that those that add or subtract to his word, he will add upon the plagues therein. So we want to keep this firmly in mind. Um, one of the other things that we want to uh, uh, show you is uh, from the spirit of prophecy. And uh, I want to quote this, uh, and it comes from, uh, let's see here, okay, one second, okay, Testimonies, Volume 1, page 608 and 609. In concluding this narrative, I would say that we are living in a most solemn time. In the last vision given me, I was shown the startling fact that but a small portion of those who now profess the truth will be sanctified by it and be saved. Many will get above the simplicity of the work. They will conform to the world, cherish idols, and become spiritually dead. The humble, self-sacrificing followers of Jesus will pass on to perfection leaving behind the indifferent lovers of the world. Testimonies, Volume 1, page 608 and 609. Uh, so, so we see again from inspiration, a small portion will be saved. She saw this in vision. And keep in mind, in her very first vision in early writings, we know that God started our church with that first vision. And that first vision was the 144,000. And what did she see in the vision? She saw a narrow pathway leading up and she saw 144,000 on this pathway. The others, she said, uh, fell off. So we again see that the Lord strictly calls 144,000 in this vision as making it up the pathway. And keep in mind that 
that, as we know as, as present truth believers, that spirit prophecy uh, is ac uh, applicable for today. And when she saw this vision, God had given this for specifically for us in the latter days to understand this and to know that this is something we must um, truly strive for. And that quote is found in a Review and Herald, March 9, 1905. Let us strive with all power that God has given us to be among the 144,000. And let us do all that we can to help others gain heaven. Again, that's Review and Herald, March 9th, 1905. Okay, so we've laid the ground, uh, foundation here for the 144,000 issue. And what we've done is, is show from different angles and throughout inspiration that it continues to keep a, a straight understanding in this issue. And that is that the 144,000 is very important for us as Seventh-day Adventists to understand and, and build upon a solid foundation what we need to do, what we need to strive for, is to be among this number. Now, as we discuss this issue, we want to go into the, the final message to us, the shepherd's rod, and we want to show from this inspiration that this issue, this understanding of the 144,000 is salvational. So when you or I as present truth believers discuss this issue and we get people to say, no, it really doesn't matter what you know about the 144,000. You know, it's, it's a very difficult subject. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. You know, just when the time comes, you'll know more about it later. Don't fall for it, because now we're going to read what the, the rod says in regards to this issue. The first quote we'll, we, we will quote is from Shepherd's Rod, Volume 1, and that's uh, found on page 14. It has been said by some that it matters not whether one under, understands the subject of the 144,000 or not, so long as he does right. This is certainly true if we do right, but how do we know whether we do right or not except we understand Bible doctrines? How can we know whether we keep the right Sabbath or belong to the right church unless we understand that doctrine? Why is it important to understand Daniel 7, the beast and his image, and many other Bible prophecies? If we do not understand the subject of the 144,000, we may not be sealed, for it would be worthless to understand it after the sealing, just as it would be of no value to understand the beast and his image after his work on earth is finished. Again, that can be found in Shepherd's Rod, Volume 1, page 14. Then we have an additional uh, quote, and that's found in... Uh, uh, Shepherd's Rod Track, Volume 1, uh, that is found in page 5. Its dominant doctrinal concern being the truth of the 144,000 and a correct understanding of it being a life and death matter to all, the rod unfolds it from several different angles, each urging the denomination to prepare for the glorious deliverance of the saints and against the inglorious destruction of the sinners as foretoken by the marking and slain recorded in Ezekiel 9. So again, we see a second reference showing that the understanding of the 144,000 should be correct uh, because it is a, quote, life and death matter. So we wanted to bring those two references to your attention to let you know that God's final message uh, lets us know that we cannot lightly esteem this, this subject. We have to take it 
and study it as if our life depends upon it. Because we must strive to be among this number. We can't uh, let the devil uh, fool us and uh, think that we can not be a part of this number and still yet be sealed. Okay, now we're going to go into the area of the those with. Uh, this is very important as well because uh, some, in fact I would say a, a large majority, I, I won't say majority, but a large percentage of present truth believers believe in what's called the those with the 144,000 that survive Ezekiel 9 church judgment. In other words, unbeknownst maybe even to themselves, they are saying that Revelation 7 verse 1 to 4 is incorrect. They're adding to inspiration which we know in Revelation 22, it clearly says we cannot do that. They are in effect saying, no Lord, you're incorrect. There is more than 144,000 sealed from all the tribes of Israel, which means all the church. Now yes, there are some that get really, uh, really sneaky about this issue and say, well, they're only talking about the Israelites in the church, not all the members. And that is very, very false. That can be shown in a, a clear understanding in a different study that the SDA church comprises of all 12 tribes. In other words, God in Psalms makes note that he has kept track of the bloodline all the way from the very beginning and, and all the way down to today. And much like a Holman pigeon is drawn to the to the home or to, to where he he needs to go, uh, so too the the Israel bloodline has drawn back into his present truth in, in, in his remnant church today, which can only be the Seventh Day Adventist Church. They're the only church keeping the Sabbath, proclaiming the Ten Commandments, and has the truth of the sanctuary. All of these important things identifies it as the remnant church. So the people with the bloodline of the Israel uh, Jewish bloodline have, have passed down through the ages and have not naturally been drawn back into his church. So this is who comprises the Israel of today. Okay, so let's go to the, uh, the understanding and different angles of the 144,000 and those with. Um, we're going to quote from a post we did on one of our blogs called Hear Ye the Rod, and it was identified uh, with the title, Identifying Those with the 144,000. Uh, and so we're going to begin that now. Let us look at this subject with a singular focus to identify the much talked about those with, also known as along with. To begin with, we should remember that as was shown from the prior study, the overwhelming preponderance of evidence from Scripture, Spirit Prophecy, and the Rod shows that those with cannot be those who are alive in the SDA church at the judgment. In other words, the inspired word shows that only 144,000 living SDA members are to escape the Ezekiel 9 church judgment. So what we need to do is study some key verses that mention the those with and see how we can correctly understand the meaning and context. First, let us start with a very popular reference that proponents of the those with surviving Ezekiel 9 like to use to, to promote their understanding. And that's found in Symbolic Code, Volume 2, number 5 and 6, page 8. All that are found members of the church up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9 will either receive the seal and be a part of or with the 144,000 or else be left without the seal and fall under the slaughter weapons 
of the five men. Okay, again, that was found in Symbolic Code, Volume 2, Number 5 and 6, Page 8. Now, before we go further, I want to um, explain also another, uh, another point that we need to keep in mind. And that is that uh, there are basically four big organizations that promote the Shepherd's Rod today. And they are Mountaindale, which is found in New York, uh, Waco, Texas, Salem, South Carolina, and Bation Davidian Seventh-day Adventist, which is found in Missouri. Bation and Salem both teach the those with that survived 144,000, uh, survived the Ezekiel 9 church judgment along with the 144,000. In other words, they are proponents of the teaching that 144,000 sealed is incorrect. That there's more than 144,000 sealed from all the church. The other two organizations, Mountaindale and Waco, teach that there is strictly 144,000 that get sealed in the church judgment. And that's the total amount that gets sealed. So this is a divided issue among the uh, present truth believers today. And that's why we thought it would be very important to put a post out and give us give the, the understanding that we have after seriously undertaking hours and hours of research on this subject because we know that, as we pointed out before, this is salvational. And so if any of these organizations are caught teaching a false salvational issue, well, we, we would think that's very, very important and that's serious before the Lord. Now, we, we contrast that, we contract that with, a, with a teaching, say, of the symbolic codes. Well, the symbolic codes have a lot of issues to them. Um, there is quite a confusion there. And uh, this issue, in our opinion, would not be a salvational issue like the those with issue, simply because the, the symbolic codes, many believe, and, and I personally believe as well, that some, and I quote some, of them are legitimate, true Brother Hoff, ser Brother Hoff sermons. However, the real issue gets to the fact that some are not. So with this mixture of truth, we cannot uh, jump on board and say that all the new codes are inspired, and we just cannot do that. So we understand that this confusion has lasted uh, ever since the very beginning when Brother Hodoff died and, and uh, many of the, the members began to study these things that were found, found in the uh, card files. And uh, so anyway, we want to just say that this is, this is one example of why uh, some issues are not salvational, we believe, and some are. And uh, the, the understanding of those with uh, first, from what we understand, um, Sister uh, Bonnie Smith, who is one of the original uh, members of the camp with Brother Hoff, and I believe she got in there about 36, 37 with her mother, and uh, she, <coughs> she uh, knew Brother Hoff very well. And she was also one of the eyewitnesses there as a young, as a young lady. I think uh, um, at that time when she was attending the services from Brother Hadaf, she was, I think, about 18, 19, 20. And uh, so she had a good recollection. And I have personally talked to her, and many brothers have as well. And she is very steadfast that Brother Hadaf never taught the those with understanding that Salem and Bashan teach today. 
and she's very specific in that she said that this issue was began by M.J. Bingham. And M.J. Bingham, we all know, was the founder of Bayesian. So it seems that the, the, the beginning uh, understanding of this, those with issue came from Bayesian, and specifically M.J. Bingham. And to this day, it has stayed as a doctrinal teaching within that group. And um, in the, uh, I believe in the 60s, I'm not sure when, but uh, I understand that Brother Hodiff was a student or, or studier along with M.J. Bingham and became influenced by this teaching and jumped on board with the those with idea. Keep in mind, Brother Hodiff had died already in 55, so this is quite a few years after that that this all came into existence. As, as Sister Bonnie Smith told us very clearly, nothing was ever taught on the camp about this those with surviving. She recalls only 144,000 being taught that will be sealed among the church. And of course, uh, <clears throat> this is true with spirit prophecy as well. So um, we wanted to bring that attention to you to give you a little backdrop of this uh, situation. So in that symbolic code we just read, in the surface of it, one can easily fall into the trap of thinking that there are two groups alive that survived the Ezekiel 9 church judgment. One is a part of the 144,000, the other is with the 144,000. Um, but let's really analyze this, this, sub, this uh, reference here. And I'll read it again. All that are found members of the church up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9. Let's stop right there. All that are found members of the church up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9. First of all, who finds the members up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9? Does any human being find the members? Of course not. It's God Almighty. He is the one that finds the members. And let's continue. Will either receive the seal and be a part of or with the 144,000? Um, and uh, or else be left without the seal and fall under the slaughter weapons of the five men. Okay, as we as we explain now, it is Christ, God Almighty, also that finds them. Uh, and where does he look? Well, to find members up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel nine. Obviously, he would have to search the churches of the earth. And where else would he find members that have been established in, in the SDA church? In the books of heaven. So when he looks to find the members up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9, we must understand that the all-seeing one looks in the earth, on the churches, and looks in the heaven, in the books. And then when we understand that, then the rest of the sentence, the rest of the reference makes sense because he finds the 144 literal alive members along with the those with members in the books. Okay, now, now one of the things that we want to point out is that Sometimes in reading these references, we have to understand that we limit ourselves to the understanding of the references. Unless we start looking at each word closely and to get an understanding of what could possibly it mean. Now, it's the uh, Shepherd's Rod t tells us very clearly that uh, each word uh, must, must be taken clearly into uh, consideration. And I'll read from... Uh, Symbolic Code, Volume 2, Number 7 and 8, Page 10. Those who desire to know the truth must carefully mark every word. Otherwise, they will never comprehend the truth, and, as a consequence, they will be driven by the winds as the wind waves of the sea until the wind cease blowing, probation closes, 
and they will be left to sink down in their sins as do the waves of the sea. So we see that uh, inspiration tells us we must mark every word and we must pay attention to every word. Okay, uh, so once we understand all the members of the SDA church exist both in the heaven books and in the living churches, then we can clearly understand that the, those with are those who are the ones whose names are in the books and not alive, such as Ellen White, uh, Brother Hoddoff, and all some of the pioneers that uh, were faithful in the, in the early days of the SDA church. Um, now, here is something that I would like to point out very clearly for particularly you, you, you among you, those among you that are listening that are present truth believers and I always believed in the those with living from Salem and or from Bashan. Here's what I, I want to point out very, very clearly. That quote that we quoted was Symbolic Code, Volume 2, Number 5 and 6, Page 8. I believe that was 1935, 36, right in that period of time. That cannot in any way point to uh, that cannot point to meaning over 144,000 sealed from the church. Here's why. In 1944, a good six or seven, eight years ago, from that verse, from that reference we quoted, the following was made by Victor T. Hoddeff in the answer. And it read, Notwithstanding the fact that in the closing work for the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, only 144,000 are to be sealed. And that was found in Answer, Volume 3, Question 54. Let me repeat that. In 1944, Brother Hoddeff made the following statement. Notwithstanding the fact that in the closing work for the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, only 144,000 are to be sealed. So, once we see that that declaration, which is clear beyond doubt, we cannot doubt those words that are so simple, so plain, so clear. That means that anything prior to 1944, that the, those with proponents want to pull out and say, aha, look at this. See, Brother Hadith was teaching that there is those with. They come straight, straight smash right in to a brick wall. Because 1944, Brother Hadith said clearly, it's a fact that only 144,000 are to be sealed within the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. So what does that tell us? That tells us that, just like we explained in, in understanding that symbolic code reference we said a little while ago, we have to look at those words and see how they can fit inspiration's total line of thinking. And then when we understand that that was how it's interpreted, how it's meant to be that the Lord looks in the church books and in the churches on the earth to find who the members are up to Ezekiel 9. Then it all makes sense. It's all flowing. It doesn't fight against each other. And those that, that quote the prior verses to 1944 fight when they, against each other when they say, Yaha, see, this shows that there's more evidence that there's more than 144,000 seed from the church. They come smack into this clear reference. What do they do? They either got to say, Brother Hadith was mixed up, or uh, the, this shepherd's rod uh, message is convoluted. doesn't make any sense because one would be against the other. It would be total uh, confusion. 
total contradiction. So we wanted to bring that up, uh, to your attention. Uh, just a little side note, this understanding, and I'm not claiming any, any uh, you know, any special divine prophet status or anything, but I am cl claiming that the Lord give me this understanding. I never found it before, so he let me out to show this so that we can see it. I'm just being used as a messenger. Now, I brought that up to one of the longtime proponents of those with, and uh, we did an email study, and I showed him this after explaining a few things about what his idea was in the prior quotes. And then he, he read this scenario that I pointed out to him, and he said he was shaken up. He never thought about it in this way. And so I hope that the idea is firmly in your mind if you have this, this false idea of those with, uh, because it's salvational like we said before, and we don't want to see, it, it's like if you're a present brute, truth believer and you've come so far, you've run the mile and you're at the last several hundred yards and you quit. That's how I would look at having so much truth and yet letting Satan twist it at the last minute and you twist your ankle and you fall down and you don't complete the mile. It's because of this those with issue. We have to understand it in the true light of, of how inspiration intended it from the very beginning, from the founder of our church showed that 144,000 survived that narrow, rugged pathway to, to, the, to the kingdom. Okay, so let's continue on with the post. Obviously, under inspiration, the prophet was led to republish his understanding again to emphasize the point that only 144,000 would survive the Ezekiel 9 judgment. This is key, my brothers and sisters, to understanding where uh, Brother Hadaf was coming from and his understanding of this issue. That brings us to an important question. If this statement, all that are found members of the church up to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 9 will either receive the seal and be part of or with the 144,000 or, or else be left without the seal and fall into the slaughter weapons of the five men, doesn't prove any support for the living those with arguments then how can later date statements saying the same thing prove anything as well? Such as 1TG number 4, page 27. They basically say the same thing, to be part of or with the 144,000. So are we to think that to be a part of or with 144,000 in the later statements after 1944 means Brother Hoddaf now knows that surviving SDA, others with, Will be the, with the 144,000? No, of course not. This is uh, ridiculous. First of all, if he's going to make a statement in 1944 so clear that only 144,000 are to be sealed from the Seventh day Adventist denomination, and he's going to change it after that, inspiration would tell us. It would not hold us in the dark. It would say something like, I have something to say. I've been uh, revealed new truth. And that is that there's going to be more than 144,000 uh, sealed in the church. He would make a statement clarifying it. Because he knows that this issue is, is salvational per the beginning statements of the rod. The very first statement. One of the first statements was this is a matter, a life and death, death matter. So, um, so with with this uh, with this understanding, uh, we want to also come to uh, another crucial reference. Explain who the those with are. So obviously, if it's not living among the SDA church at the church judgment time, it must be a certain group of people. So we have to identify who they are. And in volume four. Question 93, uh, the prophet was asked, Although I am not a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, yet since I have 
have the light on Ezekiel 9 and on the truth of 144,000 will I fall in the slaughter of the wicked if I do not fully accept and live up to the light and conversely will I be subject to the enjoyment of the privileges of the 144,000 and be one of them if I obey all the light of this message answer even though you are not a member of the church still you would be held accountable for the light which you have had on the subject for no one finds the truth accidentally or sees it without the Holy Spirit's aid. By the same law of accountability or sacred responsibility, even though you may have come into the message only recently, you can be eligible for election of the 144,000 if you live up to the message that is to purify and seal them. Whether or not for a certainty, however, you will be one of them, we do not know. But if you are faithful to the message, you will at least be one with them. So we find that the answer, I mean question number 93 in volume 4 of the answer, shows us that non-members of the Seventh-day Adventists have the ability and potential to be those with. So this is a very, very uh, <clears throat> deep understanding here. It's very uh, unique. And we, inspiration does point this out. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Now, <clears throat> we also want to touch base on uh, uh, more issue of those with. In question um, 161, uh, it says, uh, Sister White was told that only 144,000 may enter the Holy Temple in heaven. Since, however, she herself went in, for she says, the wonderful things that I saw early writing, is she not one of the 144,000? <clears throat> this is the answer. We must realize that Sister White entered the temple only in vision, not in reality. The 144,000 were not bodily there, and neither was she. She was taken there in vision for no reason other than to view the things therein, that she might describe them to us. So necessarily, of course, she had to enter in. And since she certifies that the 144,000 are living saints, early writings, page 15, and since she herself died, she cannot be one of them, though she can be one with them. So the, uh, the rod clearly shows us that the, the, the prophet, along with some of the uh, pioneers and the, the, uh, the faithful in the early message of this SDA church, can certainly be one with them. So in the summary, the true those with, the 144,000, that the rod intends us to know about is not the living SDA at the time of Ezekiel 9 church judgment, but rather the resurrected saints from the SDA and the resurrected non-SDA members around the world. Those alive at Ezekiel 9 who are non-SDA members also are potential parts of uh, being those with. And uh, so we're going to close with one other uh, important uh, statement that uh, many uh, of those studying the those with issue do not contemplate, but I want to bring this to your attention. One of the very last uh, books that the prophet Victor Hadoff wrote was called Reporting on Activi Adventist Activities. And... Uh, in uh, on page 21 and 22 um, it says this is the prophet speaking why are we bringing more people into our churches if we positively know that only 144,000 out of a vast multitude of church members are to be worthy of translation why are we bringing them into the church and why are we giving them hope of being in the kingdom while we positively believe that they cannot be saved. 
Is not such an ingathering the lowest form of outright deception and greatest endeavor to infiltrate the church with terrors ever heard of? So, uh, the prophet here just this was last one of the last uh, references that he ever made about the 144,000, and it, it's important to note that he was rebuking the church for the fact that. Only 144,000 is told to be sealed among the church, and they were uh, bringing in more and more into the church. And in other words, what he was pointing out is the 144 was a literal, saved, complete number in the church, and that <clears throat> we had so much work to do even back then. Of course, you know, the prophet did not know, just like. Uh, the early apostles did not know that they would not see the Lord come again. They all believed that, and uh, you know, Apostle Paul uh, in Thessalonians said, "We who are alive when the Lord comes." So, Brother Hanif was in the same boat. He believed that he would see the day when the Lord comes, and he would go all the way to the kingdom. Of course, the Lord didn't take away his hope, and that's a very important. Point to remember that the Lord never takes away a prophet's hope. Just like Apostle Paul, he believed that he would see the time when the Lord comes in the clouds. And same with Brother Hadaf, he believed that he would see the day when he would get to the kingdom and see the Lord uh, on Mount Zion. And so, uh, this concludes our our presentation on 144,000 and those with. And we pray and hope that. This understanding is clear, and if you're still not clear about it, we, we suggest that you go to our our site, hearyetherod.wordpress.com, and we have a seven-part study on the 144,000 issue. And we bring all the different quotes from the rod, and we all also bring all the different quotes from uh, the statements that the those with use. To, pro to proclaim their, their ideas. And, uh, you know, prayfully study the issue and, and come to a clear conception of it because, as we mentioned before, it's a life and death matter. So we'd like to close with prayer, and uh, we hope you've been blessed. Thank you again, Father, for allowing us to put a presentation on tonight. We pray that this issue, which you have deemed as salvational, is an issue that these people study well, that they take up the, the inspired word and, and look and see all the weight of evidence and make a decision at that point. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.